Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, we are picking up on chapter 6. We're going to do half of the chapter today on the revelation of Jesus Christ. I am Dustin Wooten. I'm John Gabriel. And we're the pastors here at New Day Church. So this is where things start to get interesting. Not that the throne of God or anything prior isn't. But what's really important is this is where we've started to see things that have made it into the culture. So we're going to talk about the opening of the first four seals, which many of you will know as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So there's a lot of ways to look at this. Number one, you can look at this as literal, uh, that there will literally be a writer. Now let's look at the first one, right? The, the first seal opens. And it says, the living creatures with a voice like thunder say, come. And out comes a rider on what? A white horse. Uh, everything has symbolism. And so you can look at this literally, and that's fine. But there is, even if you're looking at it literally, there's still symbolism to what's happening. So the rider comes in on a white horse. Now, the white horse represents a horse of peace. So this rider is supposed to represent peace coming into the world. But then you look. What, is he, what did he bring with him? A bow. Now, a bow was a sign of the, of the hunter and the conqueror. Right? If I conquered somebody, I had a bow. You see that a lot in ancient architecture. And then a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. So the first writer uh, that we see of the apocalypse is one who is going to be the, the Antichrist, if we're looking at it literally, or if we're looking at this, how I think uh, Revelation um, wants us to, is uh, the in in first or in First John it says the spirit of the Antichrist have always been with us, and there have been multiple Antichrists up until this point. Now there will be a final one. So the point is there will always be an Antichrist coming into this world, and there will be a final one. And what is his point to conquer? So the first thing that will happen is the lamb of god who is jesus will break a seal on the scroll and from that seal will emerge the antichrist the one who will come to conquer who will look peaceful who will be given a crown of a kingdom that's supposed to be of peace but instead it'll be a conquest now the conquest part is very important because that means it's not just a charismatic person like he's not just going to be lovable he will seem lovable but he will force you to comply period he will force his will onto the world that is what he is bringing quote unquote to the table it is you assimilate or you will die and and we see that we see that in the world today but we won't. See, we will see this on a much grander scale during this during the end time period. But the reason I say it that way is this book had meaning for the intended audience. Who was this written to? The seven churches in Asia. It's clear who's being written to. It's being written to them. And so this had relevance for the first century, the second, third, all the way up to where we are today. Yes, it's apocalyptic literature, but it's not just for future events. It's also for us to look now. So we're not trying to interpret who is the Antichrist. We're trying to interpret how is the Antichrist moving in the world today. Because he's always been moving. And it's somebody who is charismatic, looks peaceful, but will enforce and impose an ungodly will on the populace. So the next seal opens. Creatures say come, and out comes another horse. Now this horse is bright red, and its rider is permitted to take peace from the earth. So the first horse seems peaceful. Red horse is very obvious. This is somebody who is coming with bloodshed. Right? That's why horses were red. There was old sayings of the of blood running through um, Jerusalem, and it would be up to the breast of a horse and so um something during the, the different occupations of, of israel and so this writer is permitted now notice what this is these are not um these are not necessarily all from god these things are these could be entities 
These could just be, again, ways of looking at the world. But regardless, God has to give this permission. Right? So when the second seal breaks, he's saying, I am giving permission for this writer to take peace from the earth. And what happens when there's no peace? Men slay one another. And it says he's been given a great sword. Not that he is the one personally slaying people. He is the one leading the charge so that we slay each other. Now, if there's anything man is good at, it's slaying one another. It, it, if you look through just the centuries, all the bloodshed, and we get creative about it, we also become more and more numb to it. Right, another tragedy is another tragedy. Right, we, we just let numbers be numbers instead of seeing it as, as people, one for whom is made in the image of God, or one for whom Christ has died for. But this is something that is happening in the supernatural realm. Like this is a stirring, not just here on earth. So then we have the third seal. And this one came and it was a black horse with a pair of scales in his hand. Now this one, this black horse was representative of like the like the sheriff of Nottingham type character. Like this is one who is coming in greed. This is one who is coming uh, uh, to to enforce poverty and make itself rich, right? So the the debt collector's coming. That's why he has a pair of scales in his hand. And this is akin to a lot of scripture that says, "What you sow, you will reap." And the way sowing and reaping worked is I cannot be paid for something I did not put on the scales. So in other words, if I put 10 things of barley on a scale, I can't ask for 20 things of barley. So he says, oh, I'm going to deal this out as I see fit. Not as what's fair. He will control what's fair. And it says in the creature saying, oh, when this when this being comes, it says a quarter of wheat will be a denarius. In other words, if you want a bag of bread, it'll cost you a day's worth of gold. And three quarts of barley for denarius. Do not harm the oil and wine. What that means is this particular seal will bring about poverty. And it will bring about uh, just financial hardship and ruin to the populace of the earth. Again, we don't have to look far to see that happen. You don't have to look far to see the exploitation of human beings. But again, at this time, it's a scale that you and I can't even fathom. But there's the reality is there's many parts in the world it won't be any different. For us here, it is different. For a lot of the world, it's not. This is their reality. Uh, in Zimbabwe, the American dollar is worth 1500 of their dollars. When I was in India, our dollars were 55 of theirs. Uh, when I bought food, sometimes it was the equivalent of half of a quarter of a penny. And so for us, who are so blessed, especially here in the West, this will hit us and hit us hard. We will see classism that we haven't seen. That's why it talks about the oil and the wine. Because what are people going to need? Oil to cook their food and wine to drink so they survive. And who's going to control that? Not the people, but the person. So then you have the fourth seal. This is the pale horse. Now that word pale is the same word you get the description for a corpse. So in other words, this horse looks like a corpse. And its rider is death. And it says, in Hades follows him. And so we see a similar verbiage in the Old Testament. With death and Sheol. Sheol is where the dead go and are, are held until the day of judgment. We won't get into that at the moment. But that is something we will get into over the course of the book of Revelation. And so death comes. And with it, all those who will die. And he's given authority over a fourth of the earth. So what that means is exactly what it sounds like. This entity. Or you'll see times where it says up to a quarter of the earth can be killed by war by famine, by pestilence, it says even by a wild beast of the earth. So what this writer does is it's coming to bring an end to people. The others are trying to get others to, you know, exploit one another. This one's different. This one's coming to do it itself. 
So there'll be moments when death is allowed to just go over the earth. We've seen this over, over time and time again. But again, not on a scale like we've seen. So we have those last few, then I'll hand it over to Pastor John Gabe. But it says to, to kill with a sword. So that's not war like the other. This is that malicious, just malfeasancy of murder. When it talks about famine, just folks being starving, pestilence, sickness, the wild beast. We don't worry about, there's a lot of cultures who don't worry about that a whole lot. Uh, I was talking to a missionary who was in China, and they were going to take a hike up a mountain pass, and he said, hey, is it is it safe? Uh, now, uh, in Asia, they don't have political correctness like we do here. So he looked back and he goes, well, you're, you're not that fat. I think you'll be okay. So that's not, that's not what I mean. No, is it is it safe? Well, I don't know. How healthy are you? No, like, is there wild animals up there? And they all laughed at him. And he's like, why are you laughing? He goes, we ate them all. There were no wild animals in the past anymore. But when you start to see predatory beasts, you know, we're talking squirrels and things, the predatory beasts will come out. And that is symbolic of just the wild ravages of nature will be allowed to happen. And that's really important because there's what is natural evil. Is God sovereign? Yes. But in this passage, he's allowing things to play out in his sovereignty. And so there's the evil we give to each other. There's evil that is just from sickness. And there is just the natural world that is falling. And it's important for us to understand that if there's ever a reason for us to reach the lost, it is because of things like this. This is something that God never designed for man to endure. But because of sin, this is what needs to take place to fulfill part of God's plan. And, and so in doing so, we have to love God, love others, but also share our story. If there's ever a reason for us to evangelize and witness to others, it's so that they don't have to endure these times. It's so easy for us to believe that, hey, you know, we're safe. We're going to be with Christ and we're going to be on the good side. But you know what? Don't keep it to yourself. You know, there's there's a, a certain level of accountability that we carry, and that is to share our story. You know, you can steal from people in different ways. You can take something from them, but also you can withhold something from them that's rightfully theirs. And that is the gospel. The gospel is rightfully theirs. No matter what they say to us in, res in response, it is our duty, it is our responsibility to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ so that they will not have to endure times like this. So be praying for your families, be praying for your loved ones, but also be praying for your enemies. Jesus always told us, love your enemies. And part of that love is just sharing your story about how God can spare people from times like this through salvation in Jesus Christ alone. So with that being said, Pastor Dustin, do you have anything else to but I think one of the things we want to hold to is uh, uh, when we look at these seals being pronounced on, on the earth, uh, we as Christians, like as you put out, have a freedom to, uh, to conquer during this time. And it's not just be on the cowering end of things. Because we don't have fear of the sword. We don't have fear of the famine. Of the pestilence or anything like that even as they happen today there's wars and rumors of wars but as the scripture says those are just the birthing pains and so that's the freedom that is offered to us so we want to thank you for joining us and being a part of of this study through the book of revelation if you have any questions you can email us at staff at newday416.church uh, you, uh, uh, if you want any more information, you go to our website at newday416.church. And we love you and we pray for you. And uh, have a blessed and wonderful week. And we'll see you on Sunday.